In this video, we're going to look at a Lego problem called partition list. So given the head of a link list and a value x, partition it such that all the nodes less than x come before nodes greater than or equal to x. Uh, you should reserve or pre-reserve the original relative order of the, of the nodes in each of the partition, uh, each of two partitions. Uh, so you can see that we're basically given the head of a link list and we are given the value, which is x. We basically want all the nodes that are less than x should be on the left. All the nodes that are greater than or equal to x should be on the right side. So you can see that here, you can see we have an example where um, the, the value, the x, is basically 3. We're basically getting all the, val uh, all the nodes that are less than 3 on the left side. So you can see node 1, node 2, node 3 is on the left. And values that are greater than no uh, or, or value 3 will be on the right side. So you can see 4, 3, 5, they're all greater than or equal to 3. So they will be on the right side. And basically, you can see that um, we want to preserve the original relative order of the nodes in each of the two partitions. Um, so you can see that we basically pres preserve the order that 4 comes before 3 and 3 becomes uh, Oh, sorry, four, uh, three comes after five, right? And you can also see that one, two, three, they're all also in their relative order as well. So this problem is pretty simple in my opinion. Basically what we can do is that we can have two lists. So one list, right, is basically uh, keep track of all the nodes that we have that are lower than X or smaller than X, right? And then we also have a list that's uh, that all the nodes that are bigger than or equal to X. Right, so originally we basically reiterate all the nodes that we have in our list, right? So this is our list. We iterate each and every single node. Uh, for this node is less than x, so we put that in our uh, in, in our uh, low sublist, right? So in this case, our low dot nest would be equal to one. And then in this case, we have no four. No four is bigger than x, so we add no four onto the high, right? No three is also bigger than or equal to three, so we add it on to our high list as well. And then two is, uh, in this case, is less than three, so we add it on to our low. Um, and then in this case, we have our five, so five is bigger than three, so we add it on to our high sublist, right, or our high link list. So in this case, we add five here. And then two is less than three, so we add it on to our low sub uh, link list. And then at the end, what we're basically going to do is we're basically going to merge those two lists, right? So we merge, so we get this node right here pointing to this node. And to avoid, now the tricky part of this question is that we want to avoid cycle in our link list because in this case, this node 5 is actually pointing to node 2, which is like um, this node right here. So we don't, we, we want to avoid cycle. So what we had to do is we have to get the last node that we have in our list point to null, right? So that's kind of like the tricky part of this question is we have to remember to, to make sure that the last node is pointing to null. Um, so in this case, the, the time complexity for solving this problem, because we're iterating each and every single uh, you know, uh, node once, right? we basically iterate the entire link list, and then we basically separate them into two, uh, two sub lists. Right? And then at the end, we basically merge two uh, two lists together, right? The low list and the high list together. Um, so basically, this is exactly what I did. Is first of all, I define the base case. I check to see if the head is null or head.nest is null, right? If it's null, we basically don't have to do anything. We just return the head. Um, now we do define the pointers, right? So in this case, we have our D1, we have our D2, basically like dummy one, dummy two. Um, and then we have our low, we have our high, right? So here we basically just iterate the list. So while the current is not equal to null, we basically say, okay, well, if the current dot value is less than X, then we could just gonna get low dot nest is equal to current, right? And then low is equal to current. Um, and then what we're gonna do is that if there's a situation where current dot value is bigger than or equal to X, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get high dot nest is equal to current and high is equal to current, right? And then at the end, we basically just move on to the next element that we have in our, uh, in our link list. Right, so once we create this, you know, two link lists, one is the, the low sublist, or in this case, yeah, the low sublist, and the other one is the high sublist. 
uh, we can be able to merge the two linked lists, right? So we just get the low, which is the low is pointing to this node right here, the last node that we have in our low sublist. We're just going to get low.nest is equal to d2.nest, which is basically this node right here, which is the head node of the high sublist. And then at lastly, we want to make sure we get high.nest, which is equal to null. So we're going to get this node point to null, right? And at the end, we'll just return the head of d1.nest. So basically, this is how we solve this problem. And the time complexity for this one is basically big O of n, where n is the number of nodes that we have in our linked list. And the space complexity is basically constant because we're basically using pointers um, to keep track of the two sublists, or in this case, the iterate the list, right? So there you have it, and thank you for watching.